Okay, we'll get back. Good morning. How's it going? <laughs> US, that was yesterday, right? Yep. And is that a, like a national holiday? It is, yeah. Because I know some of those holidays are like kind of some places have it and some places don't. don't know, no, this is one of the ones that everybody does. Years ago, we had, when I was a kid, we had Washington's birthday and Lincoln's birthday, and they were both in February, and then they kind of merged them together into a single President's Day. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Sometimes it's a federal I'm... holiday. Not all businesses observe it. Yeah. Most okay. do. I find that most do. Sometimes they choose between Martin Luther King Day or President's Day. They become I can, nice. I can tell you which one I'd pick any day of the week. <laughs> the former. I think we all should. Uh, MLK Day is um, is far less observed than President's Day. I think that's wrong. And I didn't chat Jim saying it's a Tito snow holiday because of snow caused power outages mm. in some areas. I yeah. thought Lee had said he can't make it due to power failures. A lot of folks snow I know in Austin time. have uh, no power or intermittent power today and yesterday as well. So we'll see how it goes. Yeah, my son works. Snow in he, Austin. Yeah. Reminds, yeah. reminds me of QCon. <laughs> my, exactly my, right. my son is a software engineer working out of Denver, but they they do remote desktop and for development, and all of their servers are in Texas. So no dev yesterday. <laughs> hmm. 
Well, that's the joy of the public cloud, I guess. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Except for I don't think it's very public cloud. I think it's, he works for Raytheon. I think it's very much Raytheon data center. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> if it was public cloud, he probably would have been coding yesterday. Yeah. I think All we've right. got who we're going to get. So yeah, let's go ahead. Yeah, should we, should we get started? I think it's a fairly light agenda, right? Mm -hmm. That's, uh, so welcome everyone. Normal rules apply. And you've made it to the meeting already, and it's being recorded. And uh, Amy will no doubt mark off who is here with us. And now we have our agenda. Yeah. So one thing that we uh, will need to sort out is TOC liaison. So I thought it might be a good idea. We've we've had a little bit of a, uh, a chat about that amongst ourselves, which I'm just going to try and bring up. Uh, I should have opened the right Slack channel. Some up here. This is yeah. what I think we knew. Yes. Does that sound right to everyone? Anyone want to say, no, that's wrong? Okay. Um, I think historically, it, when the rule the rules were drawn up, the, there needs to be at least one liaison. I think that having two has actually turned out to be quite a good thing for kind of you know redundancy, high availability, bit of handover between one. Uh, you know, you're unlikely to lose both liaisons at once. So I think if we can set up two, that seems like a good idea to have two liaisons per sig. Um, so I guess from the TOC folks who are here, I see one or two, do we have, one or two, it's more than one or two, I see quite a few of you. Do we have any uh, volunteers or people who had already mentioned being a, uh, a SIG liaison that we should add into this? Yeah, so I had, uh, this is Cornelia, I had mentioned that, um, I would absolutely, of course, be um, willing to be the suggested. Um, also, given that there are none down on observability, I would also be willing to do one or the other. I don't think I can do both. Um, but I'd be willing to be uh, SIG observability if that's where the greater need is at the moment. Unmute myself. That's great. Thank you, Cornelia. Um, I can see a lot of sense in, in you having relationship with app delivery. Um, mm -hmm. the background. That does make a lot of sense. Um, uh, any other, the other thing we should bear in mind is that we will be appointing one more person to the TOC. There's the TOC appointed seat when Michelle's seat expires. Amy, do you have to hand when that happens? Um. I'm honestly not going to wake that up until like at least the end of the week. And this person will be seated before, um, I believe it's March 29th. So, right. so soon, next, but you got some time. Month. Yeah, Correct. so it's next month. So yeah, we, if, we, we don't have to uh, press gang anybody into being a liaison if we, um, uh, you know, when that person joins. Uh, I'm wondering, Cornelia, if we could at least temporarily have you take on observability as well, just as a sort of, so that if there was some urgent need, um, or if anybody else wanted to uh, take that on as well from the TSE folks. Yeah, I mean, I'd love to have somebody who does their day in day out on observability if they wanna be the main one and then I can do app delivery, but observability, yeah. You know, there's definitely a connection and an interest from my side, even to my day job. So I'm more than happy to do SIG observability until somebody better qualified comes along. That sounds pretty cool. Isn't SAD also on storage? Or have I imagined that? Because he used to be a storage co-chair, didn't he? I, I think he's still technically the co-chair and not the um liaison which is a seems a little weird and I'm, sh I'm sure we could move him from one to the other 
I think that's a really great point. We should, um, I don't know if we have a definition of what happens when a SIG co-chair becomes a TOC member. Kind of makes sense to me that, well, that that might mean there would be a good SIG liaison, but I think it probably means that the SIG should appoint a new chair in that case. Yeah, I think that's going to be the case with Lee Zhang as well, because he's one of the co-chairs. He and Eloise. Yeah. And Erin is also on storage, if I remember rightly. Yeah. Um, Erin is co-chair of storage and Saad used to be a tech lead. So they would be either either Saad or Erin or both could be great it's liaisons because they already know the landscape pretty well. I think that makes an awful lot of sense. Yeah. Um, does anybody think it would be a bad idea to say that TSC members should really kind of concentrate on being on the TSC and the SIGs should really try to fill that space and appoint new co-chairs? Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense because it gives people new, new people an opportunity to do things on the SIG. And um, I think um, having having a pipeline of people who have been through those roles is really helpful. As I mean, as we found with SIG Security, finding new people takes a bit of time. It's good to have that process happen more often. And it's, it's really great that people move from SIGs to TSE. So we should encourage that and encourage the fresh people to move up yeah I, I i think that makes a lot of sense in terms of developing people's roles and and the, the backfilling encouraging new people to to get involved in sig roles is is yeah makes total sense all right um so in that case if you are a sig chair who's here and you uh you know that one of your co-chairs has, has moved up to becoming a TSC member, now would be a good time to start thinking about candidates for your, um, for being co-chairs on your six. All right. So probably it makes sense for Saad and or Erin to be the liaison for storage. Um, I, I guess that leaves network Liz. Yeah, I um, I don't really want to be networked by myself, but I could potentially be a, a you know, take on. I take can share it with you. I mean, like I said in our earlier conversation, uh, I'm not necessarily working in network a lot, uh, but I'm happy to share that with someone and I'll have trouble making all the meetings. So I definitely would need to share it with someone, but maybe between the two of us, we can make it work. I think that should we pencil that in and these things you know don't have to be set in stone we can rework them when we have you know our full complement of TSE members and I'm happy to do the storage liaison Liz great thank you I wasn't sure you were here Erin so that's that's good Fantastic. sorry I don't know why I didn't have it on my calendar apologies <laughs> it's fine you're here it's great wonderful so um I've written some notes here that says, Erin storage, possibly also Saad. Is Saad here? Guess not. Nope. Cornelia on app delivery, hopefully a second on observability. Dave and myself doing network. And then I think that means at least, everything is sort of at least partially covered temporarily. Yeah. Okay, uh, I think that's probably everything we need to say about SIG liaisons. So we have kind of open floor uh, time for anyone to raise anything they would like to raise. Um, sure, I have something. So I think maybe before I joined, um, Liz, you said you thought maybe the TOC members shouldn't be co-chairs of SIGs anymore. Is there, can we discuss why 
that is? Sure. Yeah. So, sorry. Maybe you missed that bit. Yes. So, um, Justin, do you want to say what you said? Repeat what you said. <laughs> I think you phrased <laughs> it very well. <laughs> Basically, so that it gives people an opportunity to step up and work in the SEG. And the, I mean, we have the liaison role. And um, I think it's a really good path for people to, I mean, it's really ni nice to see so many people moving from working on SEG to being on TOC, but um, by giving more people an opportunity to rotate. I think one of the things we found on SIP security was that succession, we hadn't really thought about succession and new members much. And it was really, um, we had some people, we were, I think, the first SIG to have people step down at the end of their terms because we were one of the earliest SIGs. But I think having some of those people coming up earlier, so there's a bigger pool of people who have done those roles is really, really good. Normally, yeah, I would agree. I think we're also one of the first SIGs, and Alex and Quentin and I have always been co chairs, but we have really had a hard time finding people. Uh, to even be tech leads within the SIG. Um, so I guess, is that a suggestion or a mandate? Is that something that we should go back as, as the storage SIG co-chairs and figure out how we want to proceed or, or are we going to make that part of kind of the TOC responsibilities to give up that role? I think it's desirable. I think like a lot of things in CNCF, we should have a little bit of, you know, judgment and flex. We don't have to be rigid for just rigidity's sake, but um, I think, I think it's desirable. Okay. I guess I'm wondering whether if, if we have a SIG that is struggling to kind of staff its roles, its chair positions and its tech lead positions, what can we do to sort of help backfill that? Yeah, I'm not sure that the solution is to not kind of promote people on. I feel like the solution is to try and figure out how we can expand that pool of people. Which yeah. I appreciate is a difficult problem, but I feel like that would be a better to try and make sure we're sort of pulling people in from the from the grassroots. Yep. Okay. Yeah, yeah I, I get both sides of it. So we'll see what we can do. Great. Anybody else want to throw in any thoughts on that? Just a short sort of um, echo of what Aaron just mentioned. It, it would be good if we had a little bit of flexibility, even if it was for a temporary basis, not to um, not to uh, kind of lose Aaron as a co-chair just now until we manage to find some other people if, if that's where we're going, but mm. it would be a big loss for us. I definitely think that, you know, TOC members can and should be as involved as they want as members of SIGS if, if they have the time and capacity to do that. I'm, I'm definitely not. I don't think anybody's saying they shouldn't be involved in SIGS. I think it's more just trying to, spread out the the responsibilities and and give the opportunities for roles to more people if we can yeah no, that, that, that makes sense great i also see in chat uh elena volunteering to be the second liaison for contributor strategy lovely Cool. Okay. Um, so yes, open floor. Anyone got any topics they would like to bring up? So I got one topic. So on the fact that maybe uh, some six are having a hard time trying to find more contributors or more people to become sick chairs. Um, I don't know if my it might be a good idea for the SIG contributor strategy uh, SIG to help out and maybe uh, reach out to more places so um, so uh, we get more people involved and uh, people more uh, trying to get into the, those roles of, of SIG chair and, and tech leads. So I'd like to so it would be great to hear anything any thoughts from the 
SIG contributor strategy, if they have any. Hey. Oh, wow. Yeah. I realized how my webcam was like all the way. I was like, hey. <laughs> hey, everyone. Um, I think a good I think a good first step would just be uh, outreach. Uh, I don't think the community at large knows a lot of work uh, that is done within the SIGs unless they've produced like white papers or something. Um, and to be very explicit with your needs. Uh, I have found in open source that when we say, you know, hey, we are looking for contributors, it's ambiguous and no one has the time for that. So, uh, like, I think if we can do some outreach and even like blog posts, um, like sort of featuring you all and interviews and talking about like your roadmaps and stuff like that. I think that would get people excited to hear about like what you like what you want to see as far as like the future of your groups. Um, I think that could be a good a good first step. Great. Yeah, that sounds good to me. Yeah. I'm also curious whether this is Sarah Allen from SIG Security, whether um, the there the SIGs that are having trouble finding people to step up into leadership roles. Is it that people aren't like your, are your meetings or like, do you have very few people at all involved in the community in the SIG? Or is it that there's a lot of people who will show up at a meeting or participate in some way, but don't want to take on a leadership role? Cause those are very different <clears throat> problems to solve. Well, for storage in particular, plenty of people participate, but they don't have time to put in the work um, to do, you know, the tech lead roles or or to lead meetings. They just it's just a time thing. They don't want to step up into that role necessarily. It's still a healthy SIG. I would say we're not floundering by any stretch. I want to clarify that. Um, it's absolutely um, lots of people, good attendance, but it's just it's not for everyone, right? Everyone doesn't have the time they can volunteer off their schedule um, to be able to be in that position. Yeah, and we might take this offline, but I mean, we talked a while back about like some sort of very detailed things that we do that have helped people take on leadership roles before Tech League, right? So having lots of little things to do. I don't know, maybe you're already doing some of these things, but it might be worth talking again about that stuff. Because I think that hearing that about SIG security strikes me that it's not an outreach thing so much as a fostering the group, for, perhaps. And you might also consider bringing people from the outside. That's how we all got here, right? I suppose another question would be if, if the roles as defined turn out to be too onerous for people to take them on, maybe thinking about how they could be split into pieces if that's possible I mean there's nothing we've defined the SIG chair roles and the tech lead roles but they're fairly loose definitions right and I, I think it would be totally reasonable to say actually you know these roles could be job shared or something you know there's another thought that I keep having which is that um, I think that maybe for some individuals they feel like they the the work that they would put into the SIG would be, you know, per personal time work. And I wonder if there's anything that we can do to help individuals who are interested sell their employers on the value to their employer of them participating more significantly. So some type of a you know, blog post or something that says, you know, here's how to talk to your manager about getting more involved in the CNCF, you know, taking on a leadership role, um, participating more fully in, in SIGs. That feels like something that could be helpful as well. Yeah, I, I think that would be really helpful, but I think it, it would also be helpful to um, tie some of these things to the business of the different companies or, 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 uh, or see how that's valuable um, to yeah, the bottom line of the of whatever company the individuals are working in. So 
I mean, it's kind of difficult because uh, every business is different, right? But uh, but if you can find like some common ground that says, uh, uh, well, if people contribute more to open source and they take on these leadership roles, uh, they can make these projects more successful. And then the company can use these as end users, for example, I'm talking about end users. And then, you know, uh, the, the projects will be more sustainable, you know, and then over the long run, uh, we, uh, uh, you know, the, whatever the business will be more successful because maybe uh, all the systems are running on top of these open source projects, right? And, uh, and then if uh, they go down or if they uh, fail, then the business fails. Yeah, it feels a little bit like, you know, making the argument for open source, um, but maybe we can, you know, tailor it a little bit more specifically to, okay, you know, even if you as a company understand the overall value of open source, here's what's in it for you. If you have individuals that are more, you know, actively engaged rather than just, yeah, we'll continue to, to just ride on the coattails of this open source movement. Yeah, it's another sort of way of looking at the uh, con contributions don't have to just be about code, right? They can be about other right skills that you're bringing to the community. Um, this does seem like a really good topic for a blog post, I think. Yeah. yeah. I thought, I, I forgot, I've forgotten the name. I'm looking, um, the individual who made the really great point about contributor. Um, when you were speaking initially, my initial thought was that a lot of people, when they hear co contributor, think code. And they think, oh, well, I, I don't have the cycles to, you know, be issuing PRs against this, but even just having helping them recognize that contrib contribution doesn't just mean code, as you just said, Liz, I think is really key. Yeah, I think you were referring to me, to R Ricardo. <laughs> no, it was somebody else. It was a, it was a woman, and I'm I'm scrolling through my. Uh, she's either Sarah. dropped. Sarah, Sarah, SIG contributor, yeah. Yeah, sorry, I didn't catch your name. No, I think Paris. It was, it was Paris, it was Paris. Oh. Yep. Does anybody want to volunteer to write this blog post? Because I think it is a great, great bit of information that we could try and share or even co-author it. I will help write it if somebody else will co-author it. Oh, Richie H. Paris, fantastic. Thank you, Paris. Thank you, Richie. Brilliant. We can take that offline. All right. Um, Before I throw in ideas, uh, does anyone else have anything that they wanted to bring to the open floor? I have one more thing. <laughs> so uh, uh, I think there was an issue open on uh, renaming the six. Has there any been any traction on that? Or uh, uh, so uh, I think the initial thought was uh, you know, not to uh, to make them not to be confused with uh, Kubernetes six, right? So then, then you know, it generates you know confusion maybe in, in some communities. And you know, what is this? I, I mean, I think I've gotten some of that in the past for SIG runtime. You know, people asking what what does SIG runtime do, and or how is that different from Kubernetes or the six in Kubernetes? So. Yeah, uh, so yeah, any any thoughts on that? Thank you for reminding us of that. Yeah, I think we could be called almost anything just to avoid the, the confusion with Kubernetes 6. I massively plus one. Anyone got any ideas for what we should call SIG? So it's about renaming the SIG itself, right? Not the what comes after SIG, like runtime or, or storage. Yeah, sort of mm, runtime <laughs> storage. <laughs> um, I don't know if it's going to help. Um, thinking of the ways to advertise 
six and <laughs> berries. <laughs> not working group either something yeah it's not a working group it's not a sig how about tag technical advisory groups oh i like that alex tag i like amazing unicorns as well paris <laughs> so i feel like we just like sigs just got created um, and when they were created, they were like the likeness to Kubernetes SIGs was strongly advocated for. And it could be that after, you know, it settled in, then, you know, that's, uh, that uh, changes people's perspective on it. Um, but I feel like people are just starting to hear about SIG security, even within the CNCF. And um, you know, unless like, I, I don't know, to me, it doesn't, I didn't love the title to begin with. I really thought working group was fine. Um, so I'd just be a proponent of like, let's not rename things, but that's just me. That's just one opinion. A hundred percent know that it is causing confusion. I'm constantly, I, I Josh has just said the thing, or was it Josh? Yeah. Saying, uh, CNCF SIG network, not Kubernetes SIG network. I have the same thing with SIG security. Um, yeah, we have two SIG security. Yeah, it's, it is definitely confusing. Do we have any like domain names or anything that associate with SIG names that we would need to worry about? It's no. all GitHub. All GitHub. Um, Yeah, it's just repos. Repos, maybe some branding on the CNCF website, I guess. Probably some logos. So it's not absolutely trivial, but it's hard. It's not hard, right? Yeah, nothing we can't take care of. All right. Do we have a broad consensus for tag? That seemed to be going quite... Uh, oh, well, that's a good point. Paris saying doing a rename blog with a contributor definition would be cool. That's actually nice. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I just, I don't think tag says the same thing at all. It seems to redefine what the SIG is. Like, who are we advising? I'm just, I don't, um, it didn't resonate with me. And maybe somebody can speak more about why the that's such a great name. I think, I mean, we're advising the TOC, the projects, yeah. the contributors, uh, and the community at large yeah. through white papers and uh, guidance, guidelines, and advice. It's the first line of the charter in all the SIGs. We advise the TOC. I think it's a really appropriate name. and. Special interest is quite broad. Technical advisory group does sound quite well defined around what the SIGs are actually doing today. Any other um, ideas that people want to throw out there alternative to tag? All right. Um, Wonder if we, have we got enough people to vote on this, Amy? I think so. And um, I really, really, really want to be able to do this in the issue in, instead as I come back on the. Um, so I will put the issue over into the um, chat as well as being able to put it on the public meeting notes. Okay. So do you want us to plus one the issue? Please. As a vote. Okay. <laughs> so much easier. Then okay. I've got a record that's much more straightforward. That is seems very cool to me yeah that's actually an interesting point should we do more votes as github rather than mailing list discussions and there's probably an all, yes. all sorts of cultural changes if we were to change voting to be you know on, it, people would have to realize that, that things are happening on github we would need to make sure that the issues are shared on the mailing list and what have you but 
does seem pretty good from a tracking and maintaining history point of view. Yes, I believe everyone is probably in violent agreement about, yes, we should move to GitHub. I think the logistics are how. The one thing would be to announce those votes maybe on the TOC mailing list, but else. I can see it being much easier to track if they're on GitHub and for people to see the status of them. You know, I, I think it, from a logistics perspective and tracking, I totally buy that it would be easier. Um, I think that there's an awful lot of people who uh, aren't going to go into the issue, but will just get the email and can get a sense of what's going on with the vote and um, see the discussion. And so I do feel like there's a little something lost if we go over to the issues. Because there are people who, like I said, they aren't going to go into GitHub all the time and look at, oh, we're voting on something. Let me see what people are voting on. Um, so I kind of, I, you know, I'm one of those where I sometimes like to just see, ah, look at, look at all the enthusiasm or look, it's kind of quiet over here or something like that. So I don't, wouldn't to strenuously object, but... Dims has uh, put in the chat about people can subscribe to GitHub notifications. I think actually that's a, a really interesting point that you probably don't want to subscribe to all the GitHub notifications in TOC because it covers gazillion repos. And uh, as we've seen from that TOC Slack channel, <laughs> like any actual discussion gets lost in the noise. Um, we don't have too many issues on GitHub for the ones we have to vote. I think the real key thing here is making sure that people know the issue is there so they can see it and they can comment on it and uh, yeah, create a label for it. Okay. I feel like this is sufficiently, uh, you know, there might be some details here that maybe we should write it up into a proposal before we actually just say, yeah, let's move everything to GitHub. Um, so would anybody like to volunteer to write a proposal for that? Yeah, it's less appealing now there's some work involved. Huh? <laughs> Amy, is it something that you could uh, potentially write up? Paris is actually oh. saying she wants to write this one too. Oh, she is. Yeah, oh, but, uh, but yeah. I don't have the hours. Oh. I can work with I can work with them, uh, uh, Paris, on on this one. So that's fine. Um, it it should be pretty straightforward when we actually put it down into paper. Okay. Oh, uh, and Aaron. Paris and Aaron. Aaron. Cool. I will Wonderful. put that in the notes. I have also put a note onto the um, the TOC issue for rename, noting that Alex has proposed renaming for technical advisory group, uh, and then people can come in and vote in there. Oh, lots I'm of sorry, Amy, can you that. say it again? I missed um, that. There's, uh, I wanted to be able to make sure that we were documenting, like, here's who actually proposed the uh, the rename um, and the issue is updated. That was all. Make sense? Yep. Thanks, cool. Amy. All right. Moving on. All right. Any other administrative naming things we should cover while we're thinking about things like that? All right, one of the things that has uh, come up, actually kind of came up today, was uh, security. I think this is not something we're going to want to, um, you know, close today. But, um, you know, supply chain security being a huge concern, and we want to make sure that the CNCF projects are you know, as secure as they can be and, um, uh, you know, don't contain vulnerabilities. There's work going on 
within the Linux Foundation to kind of enable some vulnerability scanning and so on for the projects, which I think SIG Security have been looking at. And I think it's not a completed, you know, it's a work in progress. But I think the more important question is right now, the graduation criteria for projects kind of punts the question of security processes into that CII best practices badge. And uh, it was suggested to me today, and I think I agree with this, that perhaps it's sufficiently important that we should be explicitly saying, we shouldn't be saying what people's security processes should be, but we should be explicitly saying at graduation, we expect a project to have some stated policy on how they handle security, security and their security issues. This might be related to, I mean, we do that um, through the security assessments. Um, and, you know, like one of the things we audit, we look at is, do they actually have a security team? Do they have somebody, do they have a process for? And, you know, what we'll typically do is we'll write up issues if they don't have it, and we'll coach people who are, have less, um, less big teams who have experience with security and, you know, or help spread the word if they need more participants. Um, and the group itself is good at, you know, people are like, oh, I could help with that, right? Um, so it's not like we have, you know, everybody willing to raise their hand, but it, you know, it's a good exchange of information. So um, what we, you know, we're sort of jumping the gun here, but we have, we're working through a retrospective on the process. And then what comes next is alignment with the um, TOC, the stages of the project. So that may answer this, help answer this question. But I think certainly um, graduated projects should have a process for handling security issues. So the um, assessment work that the SIG Security are doing to help a project, I guess maybe we need a, a more, I think I would like to see something in the graduation criteria that it kind of just spells that out a little bit more clearly as a requirement. Okay, Richie saying, seeming to remember that having a process was required. So I think it is inside that CII badge requirement, but I'm not sure, it, it just feels too, it's sort of hidden there. And I want to make it something that people know we want to pay attention to. So this might have changed, um, but at least back then um, we had to have a, like there was an explicit thing around having a process about having an email address where people can send stuff to. Uh, and I think the first uh, review which CNCF sponsored happened before graduation to basically avoid having a major thing pop up, up right after. Uh, graduation, so I think that was even part of the graduation project uh, process back then. But that might yeah, have there's, there's the security audit is part of it, but I think this is something broader than because the audit is a sort of snapshot point in time of like, did we find any? All the like we all the processes we put in place. Uh, I know, of course, I rewrote them back then. Uh, we had to do for graduation. So maybe it just was dropped or something, but it used to be in there at least. But we were like the second project, so it's it's been years. It also could have been that it, the whoever was doing the due diligence asked about it rather than it being the criteria, right? Because a lot of things are at a little ad hoc, especially for the first few projects. Very true. All right. So it doesn't sound like anybody thinks it would be a bad idea if, and I don't mind taking this action to just propose some wording for adding an explicit requirement for a process, not any specific process, into the graduation criteria. Okay, cool. All right. I have a question about that. So that would mean more like a process, like an automated process for security checks on an ongoing basis, uh, something that uh, uh, would raise the awareness of the security in the project. And, you know, and once it's graduated, then 
other people know that, okay, this is secure. Right? And would, would also having like some sort of badge uh, help too, like a security badge and a yearly security badge help. Uh, um, I think it, you are raising this because of some of the stuff that has happened, like with the solar winds hack. Uh, and then, yeah, so people want to have, uh, uh, when they're using an open source project, make, they want to make sure that, uh, yeah, it, it, it doesn't have any security holes. Yeah, so I think as Josh says that there is already the CII badge and the, ba the CII badge does, is supposed to cover this. I just feel like, so a lot of the CII stuff is projects self-declaring that they do a thing. And I think we should be a little bit more explicit as part of the assessment, just saying, okay, you know, have you got a clear security process? And I don't think it has to be automated. I think it, it's more about saying, if this project has CVEs, how do we deal with it? How do we know, like, you know, if somebody reports a security issue, how do we know it's going to get fixed? Yeah, so I, I, I interpreted actually can what people was, even report it. Yeah, yeah I was I, I thought you were discussing the reporting and handling of issues brought from the outside, which is, you know, there may be a automated documentation thing once it's been reported, but there's a human thing, which is the evaluation of it, like that some human who's knowledgeable says, I am going to look at these issues. And there's a yeah. way to get to that human and then a way to subscribe to the outputs. Um, I think, yes. is, is that clearly what yes, you were talking that, about? That's more what I was talking about, that the people can report security issues and that there should be some process for handling those. And I, I would say that should be at incubation, not graduation. Not necessarily that it would be mature, but like and a way, like if there's a security flaw, what do you do? from the outside for yeah. a project. Like this isn't, people are using it, right, at incubation. Yeah, yeah. It's true. Does anyone think that adding it at an incubation level would be a bad idea? I think we need to revisit all of those criteria before we make a decision on it. Um, maybe this is good motivation to do that, but it would then see what it's going to change for the, you know, all the projects that are in flight right now. I don't think it's a bad idea, but. Josh is asking CII incubation. No, I think just specifically this security process part is what I'm picturing. It's quite, you know, it is quite a big ask for projects really to say, you know, you have to have somebody who's going to handle these security requests. I think, but I think it's important. I, I would say most projects already have it. It's maybe not surfaced or documented. Sometimes it's like, it's different for projects. You know, like a lot of times we've been like, well, maybe you should put that in the readme. But like, they're like, oh yeah, we have a process. So, you know, like I, I would advocate for Liz, if you're up for writing it up and then, you know, like maybe there aren't that many incubation projects. Maybe we could get a volunteer to do from SIG Security to do like a sweep and be like, let's look at them and see, do, you know, are there, are there any that don't have it? Mm. Right? Like it can always be improved, but just merely a way to report security issues and a way to track them. The, the only thing which, in my experience, can be an undue burden is if you put timing constraints on things. So you say you have to reply in X amount of time, or maybe even have a qualified reply in X amount of time. That's something which I don't think should be put on incubated projects. But beyond that, uh, just having a process defined and, and easy to find is absolutely par for the course. And, and to be clear, I don't think we should be telling projects what the process should be. Like if they want to put in like some kind of timeframes or whatever, great, that's up to them. If they want to say you have to report it by, I don't know, semaphore, that's kind of, you know, for, <laughs> by, by calling Erin's phone number <laughs> as a security process. <laughs> um, exactly, you know, that's not the process we want to follow. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's the Apple security hotline, right? <laughs> um, yeah, so, but more just saying that they have to have some documented process. We're not necessarily going to make a judgment on what the process is, just that it should be there. Does then then why go through it, I guess? I mean, I guess graduation should be like, you have everything perfectly aligned and it has our stamp of approval. There's still a possibility, though hopefully slim, that a project doesn't go from incubation, incubation to graduation. So are we saying what would this provide to people that we don't have today, I guess, is what I'm asking. If we moved it to incubation, more confidence in the project, more confidence in the security, does it really change anything? The one important property of this is that there is a defined non-public way of uh, having direct contact to the developers. That is the one thing which is actually different if you have a process, because if you just have issues, mailing lists, blah, 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 you need to reach out. You need to say, hey, I want to talk about this. Where can I reach you privately? That might add delay, blah, 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 blah. And by having an email address or web form or whatever already set up, at least that step is taken away. And that should potentially be a hard requirement that it actually reaches the relevant developers in a private manner. And that should probably be the only requirement on this process at incubation stage. I think that makes sense. This would not prevent projects from reaching incubating. Josh, do you want to expand on that a bit? I'm saying it wouldn't be a blocker. Well, because it's reasonable for them to be able Cause, to Yeah, because it's reasonable for them. And the ones who haven't set it up is honestly just because nobody asked them to. Um, yeah, and I think that's the win from it is that, you know, not every project necessarily thought about it. It's, you know. Okay. James is saying there's a process at the foundation level. So is this that you can report a security issue through a central ASF point? That feels quite onerous on, feels like an, a level of indirection between the reporter and the relevant project. Well, I mean, I think it would be a kindness to the people outside. Like if we had this at the incubation level and we made sure that, some, you know, we swept through and made sure all the projects were compliant, but we're not saying how to do it, then every project's going to be a little different. And if you're using multiple CNCF projects, we you know like it, I, we actually had somebody from the government be like, can't we just tell CNCF that there's a security issue with one of their projects, right? We didn't pick it up at that time because we were like not the highest priority. But um, but I think that's one of the it would it, it's how much are we serving our own community versus how much are we like from a security perspective, you don't use exclusively CNCF projects in the wild. Right. And so it's just would be a, way, a facility like I think it's a, a minor detail that would come after we did this provided that it goes through. Does that make sense? Josh just suggesting that uh, having a backstop security addressed at CNCF level would help projects. I feel like, yeah, that might, maybe that's a, a next level thing we can talk about and maybe think about whether that could be staffed by you know, somebody at the CNCF, even if what they're doing is turning that message, you know, redirecting that message to the appropriate maintainers. But yeah, that feels like a level more than I was necessarily thinking of for this stage. Baby steps. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> All right. Uh, we have about five more minutes left. Anybody else got anything they would like to raise, say, add? Perhaps.
Paris, you're raising your hand. Uh, I saved it for last because it's about a party called Maintainer Circle. Uh, I'm just kidding. It's not necessarily a party. But anyway, uh, we had our third Maintainer Circle recently. Uh, Jerome came on and talked and gave a little uh, accidental evangelist talk and we did breakouts. Uh, and I just wanted to let everybody know to get the word out to the projects. Uh, we still have people coming in that are like, I didn't know this was a thing. Um, but anyway, so yeah, please get the word out. Uh, the next maintainer circle will be, I think in three weeks, three to four weeks, but we always post in the maintainer circle channel on Slack. Uh, and of course, uh, Amy will get the note out to the maintainers list as well. Uh, but the next session will be with Sarah Novotny and she will talk about values and principles and why it's good for you and your project and how to change those. And it'll be really cool. Um, and also we are up for other suggestions. So if maintainers want to learn something or talk about something amongst their peers uh, that don't necessarily, that doesn't necessarily get covered uh, either in textbooks or KubeCon talks, come talk to us and we can figure it out. So that's really just sort of an announcement uh, and see if anybody had any feedback about Maintainer Circle or questions or anything like that. I definitely want to catch up on the video of that talk. It sounded really interesting. I could make the time, but it sounded really good. All right, anyone else? Okay, I think that's a wrap then. Thank you very much, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day or evening. Thank you. <laughs> Bye, all. Bye.